So we got Rondell Carter, a pass rusher from James Madison, formerly of Rutgers. Um, you know, he was the Cowboys most sought after undrafted free agent. And I pulled a handful of clips to just kind of show y'all, um, you know, what we dealing with here. This ain't even a long film session. It's more of a film discussion uh, that I'm talking amongst a handful of uh, full of uh, clips here. And then we'll talk some more at the end. But uh, Rondell, man, you know, he he's, uh, you know, he has a tool belt with a few tools in it. You know, he 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 doesn't have the 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 big tool kit, so to speak. He doesn't put a whole bunch of moves together. He doesn't set guys up. I don't think he rushes with a plan very much. I just think he kind of comes off the ball and, and push people around. And that's cool and sometimes that could be a problem because if he can push people around then you see him do things like this where he's pushing people around. He's number 5. He's the defensive end at the bottom go back uh you see him push people around if he's able to push people around but in other scenarios when he's not strong enough to push people around he just kind of stays blocked and that's my my big problem with him i actually like the other defensive end that played for james Madison, but we ain't watch a film on him um once again, he's going to be the defensive end at the bottom of the screen here. Check him out. And we're going to see much of the same, man. Like, like I said, he doesn't have this big, diverse tool belt to where I'm not going to set you up. I'm not going to rush with a plan. I'm not going to have a four-step process to get to your quarterback. I'm just kind of going to do what I'm good at, and that's run down the middle of people. And I don't recommend any defensive ends. Take note, young DNs. I don't recommend any young DNs just running down the middle of people. You know, sometimes he'll have a move here and there before the most part he's bull rushing or just using power moves and you know even with power moves you have to show a little bit of nuance there so um even here <laughs> even here same thing right coming down the middle boom punching extending now i do like this though let me slow down and give him props here i do like him coming off the ball boom i like hands inside i know a lot of coaches teach different things i'm still from that old school hand inside cloth okay um Hands inside, boom, extend. I like that extension there. Find the football, uh, get rid of the blocker, and then go pursuit. Now, he didn't get the sack on the quarterback here, but that's okay. Can I tell you something else I noticed, too, if I could just pause from the film? I learn. I think I know what people get pissed off about when, like, you know, when I do my replays like this or whatever. They mad because I don't show the whole play in the sense of the quarterback scrambling, but I cut it off there. We're not watching the quarterbacks and receivers today. We're watching Rondell Carter. If you want to watch quarterbacks and receivers, go watch quarterbacks and receivers. <laughs> We're watching Rondell. And, and, and in terms of this play, at this point, when the ball's gone, Rondell's out of the play. So what I got to show you the whole rest of it for. Get out of here. Um, Plus, the uh, college football Illuminati likes to hit me for things like that. So we're not going to go too, too far. Rondell Carter at the bottom of your screen here. Let's take a look and see what he does. Yep, more so of that thing. So, like I said, man, I like super nuanced pass rushers, or at least so you either got to be special at one thing, or you got to show me like some technique that will allow you to survive in these exchanges. And I don't necessarily think Rondell is a special pass rusher. I'm talking special, right? Like, like he ain't got um like a super quick you know burst or anything he, he's not super bendy guy or he's not even super powerful guy for that matter because if you watch some of these games and um the games are on youtube for you to go find if you watch some of these games he'll get caught up on blocks sometimes and that's bad for your health we need you to, we need you to get off blocks that's part of your job but um but it's just that if he tries to bull rush somebody that he's not stronger than then that's what he's gonna run into he's gonna run into issues like that um and he just needs to, 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 you know, work on that necessarily. Um, if you take a look at him at the top of the screen, he's the DN at the top of the screen. I just wanted to add this play because it was hilarious. Nobody really blocked him there. Uh, it's like they didn't put the tackle on him necessarily. That tight end left, so he didn't chip before he left. And his running back just kind of didn't want none. <laughs> so Rondell, he didn't, he didn't get the sack here, but he did get the pressure in the backfield. I thought that was hilarious. Uh, so I added it. Um, but yeah, like like and if I show you all of Rondell's good plays, it'll be Rondell running down the middle of people. It'll be Rondell bull rushing people um, or Rondell getting blocked because he bull rushed. Somebody got stopped and couldn't get off the bull rush. That's all you're going to see with Rondell. Um, you know, is, not, is that to say that he's a bad player? Nah. And then to be fair, my last few film sessions is everybody taking an understanding of what we're doing here. We're looking at undrafted free agents. 
that's what we're looking at. We're looking at undrafted free agents. So, of course, these are guys that may not be the total package enough to go get drafted. You know what I mean? Like, I know there were plenty of teams that were interested in him. Uh, I think he said like 26 or so teams that had interest in him. But they weren't interested enough to draft him. And I think that means something. I think that means something about where he's at and his talent level. Now, is he uh, is he a good you know, does he have a high ceiling? Sure, of course. You know, if he could just line up and push people around with no technique, of course that guy has a ceiling, has a higher um, ceiling where, hey, man, if I, you know, show you how to rush with a plan, we teach you this thing, hands and feet and stuff like that, then you could possibly be a better pass rusher than what you are. Um, you know, it just kind of is what it is, you know, where he's at right now. And the bad thing about undrafted free agents is, is that they're not guaranteed places on this team long term. I think their their year number is like three. So Rondell only got like three years on his team to grow and develop and, you know, figure this thing out to where if you're a guy like, you know, uh, Joe Jackson, you know, he has four years. Or if you're a guy that was drafted in the first round, you got four with a with a possible five with that fifth year option. So. You know, man, you know, uh, if you're an undrafted free agent, you just kind of got to sh- either show up and be great, you know, day one or prove that you can develop um, way more than others. You know what I mean? And I think that's where he's going to find, you know, find find some of his problems in terms of him coming into this team year one. Um, like, who is he going to be competing with? Where is he going to fall in, you know, in, into the roster? You know, how is he going to work in cowboy land? Um he got a hell of a fight in cowboy land. And I know that he was very sought after, but you know, he was sought after so we can be the ones that's 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 guaranteed to get the lottery ticket. Jerry Jones put the money up so we could be guaranteed him being on the team. But just because he's guaranteed that higher number, um, and and pay, it doesn't guarantee him to be on the team forever because in the in the in the grand scheme of things, um, you know, whatever that guaranteed number was, it's it's not a lot. And, you know, in terms of what the salary cap really is, like the big number that the salary cap really is. So James is not going to compete with Team Toxic, I don't think. I don't think he comes in and has a fight with Dorrance or anything. But I think his current fight, his current problem is he's got to deal with the other undrafted guys, which is uh, Ladarius Hamilton from uh, North Texas and Az- uh, Kamara, um, Azur. Kamara from Kansas. I think one of one of those three guys are gonna move on to the next level of Mortal Kombat. Then when they mind, then 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 when they move up to the next stage, they got to deal with guys like Jalen Jokes. And Jalen Jokes has had an off season. He's probably in his man body right now. Um, you know, he's had that that weightlifting program under his belt or whatnot. So then you got to deal with him. Then after dealing with with Jalen Jokes, you possibly got to you know get into that Dorrance Armstrong, Joe Jackson category. Then Team Toxic. So it's a long, long road for you to you know for you to make this team and be somebody on this team. You know, that's why we call them undrafted. You know, you know, you know, free agent guys now. Can he show up, uh, you know, day one and smoke the hell out of Tyron Smith and smoke the hell out of, out of Leo Collins and move inside and smoke the hell out of Connor Williams? Can he do that? Sure. Do I think he'll do it? Nah, I don't think he has the actual skill set to pull it off. But I'm rooting for him. If you could be great, shit, you're on my team. So if you could be great, be great. But I just think he's uh, got a little bit of turbulence in front of him. But. Those are my thoughts. Salute to y'all for hanging around this long, man. I think I like these little bonus talks at the end where I could just express myself um, and not do a whole live stream on it. I think that's cool. Uh, but follow me on Twitter, like this video, sub and all that good stuff and stay tuned for the uh, for the things to come. All right. I'll keep y'all updated on that. Y'all hold it down for the doski, woes and the peace, whiskey, man. Salute. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that's subscribing to my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute.